Over the past 30 years, I've been devoting my life to animal rescues in the south of England. If this roof collapses, we're both going to be in mighty big trouble. <coughs> Never has British wildlife been more under threat. Run, Alex. He's going to slip. People and animals are increasingly coming into conflict. This is within a mile of the M25. Ah, Struth. Oh, it was close. <laughs> After 16 years of Wildlife SOS on the television, this is our first ever series of Wildlife SOS online. In this episode of Wildlife SOS, our baby badger has poo all over its head. I think we better clean you up before you go. And Lucy has goose poo all up her leg. Oh, it's all wet and horrible. It's an episode featuring poo. To start the week off, Lucy checks up on the fox cub from the last episode to see if its neck is improving. I'm still really worried about this guy. He has put weight on, which is good. He's not dehydrated. His gums are still pink, but that is a horribly infected wound. It, is nasty, isn't it? it really is. When he came in yesterday, it had little maggots in it, which is really early for this time of year. But yeah. of course, as the weather's changing, we're getting yeah, flies. So I'm going to try doing it with him awake today, yeah. but we'll see how we get on. Pus doesn't like oxygen. So in a way, his body is dealing with it the right way, yeah. which is to open it up, yeah. let air get to it and let it heal. But my main worry is obviously there's just so many holes. Yes, Once yes. you've got rid of all that discharge, it's still looking really not too bad. It looks nice and pink. And hopefully, hopefully it will heal. When I first saw the wound yesterday, I was very shocked. It was just really horrible and he was really subdued. Um, I'm feeling a little bit more positive today. I mean, the wound still looks horrible, but it's cleaned up nicely. And he's certainly putting up a bit more of a fight today, which means he's feeling better. He's gained weight, which is fantastic. So I'm really hopeful for this little chap. We also have the added worry that it's a lot of handling for a little cub that's weaned at this stage as well. Mm. You really want to be hands off at this time in their life, but we've still got plenty of time. I think we'll just get the wound under control and then we've still got time to get him wild before he goes. With it all cleaned up, it's time for Lucy to check in on the badger cub. I think the big day has come. I think he's making such a mess of his cage now, I want to give him a little bit more room. So I'm going to take him and put him in a slightly larger cage. His eating isn't as good as we would hope. We're still having to force feed him quite a lot. Um, so I'm hoping that when we get him into this new cage, we've got a camera so we can monitor him from a distance. And I'm also toying with the idea of possibly adding a fox cub just to give him a bit of a get up and go, because at the moment he's just so sleepy all the time. I'm just going to let him know I'm coming because he's getting a bit Ensty now, which is good. There we go. All right, my chap. He's chittering more, which is what we want to hear. It's more normal badger noises. But you've made a right mess of yourself. You've got poo on your head. So I think we better clean you up before you go. I think he quite likes it. <laughs> Must be like his mum washing him. But your mum would lick you, and I'm not going to lick you. Lucy moves the cub to one of our deer sheds where he would have much more room to move around and play and hopefully work up more of an appetite. Our first call out of the day was for a mother Canada goose with a suspected broken leg. So Lucy and I head out to take a look. There is a Canada goose out there. His leg does seem to be at the wrong angle, but there's no sign of any babies. And we were told she had three babies with her. So we're going to see if we can entice the Canada goose into the bank and have a look at the leg, and then we'll decide where we go from there. Well, I'll see if we can encourage them over, but I just want to get it really relaxed. Yeah, you come straight there, wouldn't you, turkey? Come on in. Come on. Yeah, come on. The key to catching a Canada goose is to tempt it in slowly with its favourite food and patiently wait for it to come within arm's reach. However, that failed, so I went back to the car to grab a swan hook. Well, just watching how close he's been coming to the bank, 
I've just got a real feeling that I can, I can grab him. And if I do it before Simon gets back, it's going to be brilliant. So uh, here goes. Let's take, give it a go. wait for Simon to come back with this one hook and then we can tell him that we've already caught you. Why do I come on these rescues when you don't need? How do you get it? Just with my hands. Nee, 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 nee. Never work with a vet nurse. They always upstage the OAPs. Really gets me cross. I just hope it is the right swan. Goose even. He calls a Canada goose a swan. Let me just... Oh. <laughs> Always wait for the last laugh. See, she caught it, so it pooed all down her leg and not mine. <laughs> and again. Pooed again? Yes. Two hits on Lucy's leg. The knee is definitely very swollen. Yeah, he's not using it properly. It definitely needs an x-ray. I can't feel anything here. We'll have to take him in. <laughs> You're not coming in my car with that mess on your leg. Oh, it's all wet and horrible. <laughs> Even though I'm covered in poo, it was still worth it to beat you on that rescue. <laughs> I'm never bringing anybody else again. I'm going to do all my rescues solo. Well, we've got the Canada goose. We now think it's the dad because um, they've just seen some babies with another Canada goose on the other side of the river. So we've now crossed over. We're just going to have a look, see what's going on here, just out of interest. Um, so we know that mums with babies and they're safe, which is good news. Where are the babies? Having crossed over to the other side of the pond, we've seen the babies and with two parents, so that's really great. So the one we've got is a loner. We needn't worry about anything. We'll get this one back and see if we can make it well. And mum, dad and babies can stay here. We will be catching up with the goose's progress in a future episode. letting the badger cub settle into his new home for a few days, I catch up with Lucy to see how he's getting on. He's doing really well, he's eating well, but if he's only eating when we give him a syringe. I just wonder if he's just getting a little bit unhappy on his own, but see what you think when you see him. He's trashed his pen, isn't he, well and truly? He has, I think he needs a bit more room. He needs yeah. another badger to play with. I mean, he's picking at the food, but he's, he's really not eating it well. Putting with a fox cub is not ideal, but just for a couple of weeks until we hopefully get another badger cub in, it might just give him some stimulation. And also, if the fox cub is eating by itself, then it might stimulate the badger to eat by himself because he's being a bit lazy at the moment because he's not having to fight for food. Are you feeling a bit hungry, badger? You can't have it in bed, no. I give it to him in his bed. Oh, it's just such decadence. I hold my hand underneath so he doesn't spill any. It's great to see him eating more and gaining weight. However, we won't be able to keep up this five-star breakfast in bed service forever. In the next episode of Wildlife SOS, we have a sparrowhawk stuck in a warehouse. This is why Wildlife Aid goes through such a tremendous amount of rescuers when one talks about going across that beam and catching there. My days of doing that are long gone. Lucy deals with a badly injured slow worm. We're going to have a bit of trouble here, I think, closing this. And our little badger cub gets a new friend. Look, friends, are we going to be friends? Lift her, lift her head right up for me. His gums are nice and pink. He hasn't damaged any of his mouth, which is a really good sign.